Oh well that's where all the gearbox oil went then. Great. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video on Project Vinny, our 2004 Vivaro, which has given us plenty of content, as you would expect, I suppose, as <laughs> reported on these Vivaros, Traffics and Primer Stars. They're um, the van that keeps giving. I must not, I mustn't moan because it's ready to drive. And it's getting on. I mean, well, it's done 150,000 miles. It's 16, 17 years old, 18. It's getting on. But <laughs> if you saw my last video, we were checking the gearbox to see why it was covered in muck. Now, we found that out because it was leaking and there wasn't much oil left in it. So that's why it stopped leaking. But I don't know how long it was like that. There was no signs of oil leaks on the ground. There was no drips from below, but the gearbox was covered in, I guess, some thick dust, which absorb, had absorbed a lot of the oil. So if I can work it out, I shall show you a quick video or a picture or whatever I can work out of where I think the oil is coming from. And we're going to look at trying to repair this. Uh, I have been to the Vauxhall dealer and bought this kit, which is a boot kit. And it's a really quite strange boot kit. I haven't opened it yet, just in case I don't need it. But I'll show you it opened in a sec. But uh, basically, the drive shaft boot is bolted to the gearbox and doesn't rotate. And this bit is on the drive shaft, I believe, and that does rotate. So there must be some sort of a seal assembly in here. So I don't know, but what does make me chuckle is I got this from Vauxhall and they've just stuck a sticker over the Renault Group sticker. <laughs> it's funny. And this kit for a rubber boot was that, 40 pounds and 40 pence. So not the cheapest, but if it fixes it, it fixes it. I mean, if that one's done 150,000 miles for 40 quid, yeah, but I've just put new oil in it and everything. So anyway, let's uh, crack on and have a look, see what we've got to do. Uh, I guess we've got to get the drive shaft out. That would be obvious. And um, undo the suspension to do that, I guess. But we are squished in here. It is a bit of a a squish and I you know don't fit through there very well but we're in I haven't done it on the dollies I normally get the dollies and try and swing it round but it was flipping hot yesterday so I didn't so uh it's not this side it's the other side let's start and if you do like what we're doing here please take a moment to give us a thumbs up help the channel grow so the first thing we've got to do before we lift it off the floor Let's get this hub nut undone and obviously slap the wheel bolts. Now on my quick internet search that says it should be 207 foot pounds which is pretty tight. Um, I've cleaned it with a wire brush and my torque wrench goes up to 220 so we'll see if it torques out going undone because I don't know and it's really tight here so I'm going to be been really naughty and I'm going to use my foot on the torque wrench. I know it's naughty but I ain't got enough room so see if it clicks and see if it goes. God! Yeah I reckon that was about right. There gone because it <laughs> if you didn't hear it uh, it did actually click when it went so my estimate is that torque is about right. We'll see, I'll try and confirm it, but oh, oh. unnecessary groans. Yeah, 
Imagine trying to do that once you've got it up on stand. I've got the handbrake on, I've got it wedged on the other side, and I've got it in gear. So let's just quickly undo these, or slack them off. These shouldn't be nearly as bad. I think they're a hundred pound foot. And then, we can get it up in the air. And really, I shouldn't be talking through this, because if I'm talking, I can't time lapse it. So sorry, it's going to be boring. All right, nice leg shot up in the air. All right, we got it apart, and I'm going to just quickly show you the weirdness we have within. All right. You can see the drive shaft here. That's the boot. Oh, sorry, the torch boot. Can't get me in there. That's the rubber boot. It's not split. I'll show you that in a sec, but if I turn the drive shaft, see the boot doesn't turn, it's fixed to the gearbox. So there must be a seal in this assembly somewhere. It's right underneath, and if you're a returning subscriber, whew, you know I don't fit underneath vehicles very well. But there we go, that's the bottom half of the boot, and you can see the wetness that has been coming out, which is obviously my lovely clean oil, and it appears to be coming out from that area behind here. But uh, yeah. The boot isn't split that I can see. So, uh, oof, I guess the first thing is, let's drain the oil out. It's just that sump plug, it's a 8mm square. Oh, and then start stripping stuff down, I guess. Yeah, let's have a look see. I actually just took the panel out to give us a bit more of a better view, but there you go. You can see there's a bolt there. Bolt up there somewhere, there, and there. Um, and that's all that holds that inner in. But just out of interest, because there's no damage, let's try it if I can get in there. Let's make sure they're tight, shall we? <laughs> Check these things first. Oh, yeah. <gasps> well, they're not loose, let's put it that way. Let's try that other one. We can get on it. Gonna end up knocking the light out of the way. Yeah, they're tight. So, unfortunately, not an easy fix this time. Anybody getting a deja vu moment here? Yeah, me too. Right, well the gearbox oil is draining, so next thing is gonna to have to tap that with a copper hide to try and release the uh, spline in the hub. And then there's a 24 mil on the bottom. Oh, can you see it, can you see it, can you see it there? On the bottom ball joint, so we'll do that. I think I'll try and take the drop link off there. And the track rod end, I might take the ABS sensor out as well so we don't damage that, so. I'll set you up on, on the tripod, like as per usual, I'm sorry, you probably won't be able to see a lot of what I'm doing, I do apologise, um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's try our best.
Well, that was hard work. I hope you could see what I was doing there. I undone the ball joint nut at first. I couldn't crack that one. And I didn't want to damage the rubber because obviously they're not that old. And then I went for these on the bottom of the strut. God, they were flipping tight in there. They took a beating to get out. But anyway, this end of the dry shaft is loose. So I guess next we've got to get in and undo the innards and see what happens. So we just got a magnet on the end of a stick. Just going around in the oil. This was quite a clean, it wasn't quite, it was a clean bowl. Just to see if there's any debris come out. Oh, let's give it a wipe off the edges. And, well, that's not too bad. There's a bit on there, but that's to be expected, really. I mean, you know, if there was shards of it everywhere on there, I'd be worried. But I think we're okay there. So I've just cleaned out the bowl, and that's the debris that was in there. There's a few sparkly bits in there, but not much, really. Not for a gearbox, so, yeah, I think we're okay. I hope you can see okay. We've got our dry shaft loose, or I guess we've just got to undo these three back here. Just got to move my knee pads a sec, because knee pad, you know, what I need on. This is a bit awkward to get to. Let's see if I can... God, that's tighter than I expected. Flipping heck, I'm going to have to get a bar on that. There we go. Oh, I've got a nice long bar, it's half inch, so I'm just hoping I can get a bit more leverage on it. Oh, I would say they're rather tight. I don't know if there's going to be much oil in there. I do have a bucket below. Oh, firm. Let's put it down as firm, shall we? Firmly done up. Or firmly tightened. And another one. Oops. Everybody says to you, yeah, it's an easy job. They're lying. Right, let's get a little. Keep it in there to finish them off. Everything's a bit fiddly. That's one. Two. Job that's not full of oil, and then the last, if not least, right, that's them out. Um do I just pull? I don't know. Oh, just pull then. There we go. Let's bring it out. Ooh. See you at the bench. Actually, before we go to the bench, let's have a look in there. Because then I can look at the footage later and see what it looks like. Needs a bit of a clean, but it doesn't look bad to me. I don't know about you. What's your expert opinions? All right, apologies, but we're on the backup torch. And I don't know if you can see. See there on that rubber there, we've got a nice sort of step that's sort of concentric, should I say, around that side. But then you come to this side, and it's not. So I think this rubber boot hasn't been in quite right, because see the edge? going there it sort of disappears so that's where it's seating this bit here oh sorry that's where it's seating this bit here and then it disappears off the edge and then comes back a bit there so i think that's our issue this is what this wasn't quite 
in right. But I don't think there's any recovery in that rubber because that is gone quite hard. I don't think we'll ever get it back. So we're going to have to fit the new one. So we've got to take this little beastie off. Nice. Ooh, smooth. Well, feels good. And as you can see, this is the weird bit about it. We have the drive shaft in the vice. And, oh, that doesn't look right either. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah. But that wasn't leaking. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, this pretty makes me laugh, this fan. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, this stays still and that spins. So it's the opposite of what I'm doing there. Just started cleaning it up. And if you can see at that the top left position, you can see where the rubber wasn't sat properly. See where it's supposed to go all the way around and then in that top left corner, that's the position. So it must have been weeping past there and dripping down the bottom. Here's a bit of the kit. So obviously we've got our rubber boot there and the flange that goes to the gearbox. Um, a little clip to go on there. And this is that's just a bit of foam inside. That of, I'm guessing goes on to the drive shaft and fix the drive shaft and then clamp there or maybe that way around, I'm not sure. And then that looks like some sort of a dust seal. May go that way. I'm not really sure. We see we see when they get the other one off and have a look, see. Oh, and it comes up with a new clip. Just had a nice clean up in there. I'm just gonna see how this thing fits. It's a good fit or oh see it shouldn't shouldn't be that hard to get wrong in theory. But oh well. well. It's there. So let's uh, work on that dry shaft. So ultimately we've got to get this off. So this circlip has got to come off first and then got to get that off that way. Um, I'm not sure how to do it because obviously these uh, bearings sit below that step. So I'm not sure. I might just set it up in a vise and then try and tap it off with a pin punch there I don't know let's I'll try that first um, because it's gonna be awkward to put in a press like that but we'll see I might wrap some tape around it make sure these don't ping off and things as well but yeah let's try that first put it in the vise and work from there right just wrap some tape around that just to make sure nothing flies off so see if we can get this circle up off Ooh. Not with these. Let's try. Sorry for jumping them down. Let's try these little bad boys. That's more like it. Oh, I haven't got a clear how tight this is going to be. Let's um, see what we can do. Oh, it's going. I'd say that's rather tight though. I don't want to touch the splines with my punch, so be careful. Mm, it's going. I'm just going to mark the top with a. If this will work. I know which way it goes on, so. Replicate that. Try a bit on this side. Like I said, I'm being very careful not to hit the splines. There she goes. Right. Put that on the plastic bag, nice and clean. And then let's take this boot off. It's only got a. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Zip tight or cable tie holding it on, I think. 
This is all new to me. This is really ugh, mucky. You know what? Well, that's that bit. So it's got to come off, hasn't it? Um, um, I'm thumbing a lot. I'm wondering. Oh, it's on a step there. So it should come off. Let's try it um, slidey widey way. Let's see if we can get it to go. Oh, I think that's tight. Is that going? Doesn't look like it to me. When you're knocking this one around, take care because this one wants to drop, jump off. So I've took it off anyway. Oh, boot looks okay. It's not the neatest of jobs. But now at least I can just give it a tap on the end and hopefully get that off. There we go, all off. I'm just going to clean this all up and have a look, see what we've got. So we've got it all nice and clean. I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil on it just to uh, help things along. And then put the seal goes on there, like so. And then I'm going to put this one on and use the old one to push it on with because that there seems to sit on the inner race i presume this must be a sort of bearing and a seal all in one so i'm going to tap it down with the old one and i do have a little bit of tube just to try and make it easier to hit there we go that's in place the same position as it was when it came off so next is the rubber boot Next, just go and nip up that clip. Is that even? Looks good. Lovely, jubbly. Woohoo! And then tap this little thing on. Just tappy tap tap. Then the new circlip on. Get that tape off and then we're done. I'll do that in a sec once I've got the other end on. Just gonna put some new grease on the other ball joint and put it back together. There we go, all back together. I just put that back in, re-greased it. That was no problem. Um, this side, this is the old one obviously and you can, you can see how distorted it was, but it's, this, this, I'm wondering if this is some sort of aftermarket one because of, um, that metal ring doesn't actually stay on, it's just sort of sat there, whereas this is proper retained in there, so I would suggest if you're doing this, it might be worth spending the extra, well, I don't know if you can get them anywhere else, but this was 44 quid. No, £40.40. <sighs> OEM stuff, you know, it might be worth it in this, especially if it stops this happening. Imagine doing that and then having it leak and then having to take it all apart again, you know. You spend that much on gearbox oil, you know. So, yeah, OEM parts, good in this case. And it's, you know, lovely, jubbly, spins beautiful. So now we just got to get it all back in there. Also on a note, when I was taking this off, obviously that did fall off. That's why I cleaned it all up. So, you know, if you could do this in a press, it would be a lot less aggressive and, and a lot better. Obviously, not everybody's got a press. 
a lot of people have got good advice so make sure you're just careful tapping it on and off it comes off um, and obviously <laughs> if you can stop that falling off then you won't have to take it apart and re-grease it but there we go it's it's there now ready to go back on all nice and clean um, what I'm gonna actually do is I got these in my bolt box it's just a couple of studs there I mate with uh, just a, a screwdriver slot in them and I'm gonna put these in just to guide the um, oh the new boot in so I'm gonna do that and then hopefully we won't have any problems with it sealing like it did before because obviously it's, it is a little bit awkward it's all at arm's length some idiot put a camera in the way as well so these should just help guide it on well it's got two chances hasn't it so let's go for it try and wrestle this thing in Is a little fiddly and then hopefully if I can get it over those two studs like that. it might help it into place and then just stick some that on this side which I can't get my hand up here because they're too chubby So now if I nip that one up just gently, I can pull one of them studs out and do the same. Yeah, method in my madness. That's it, they're done up, all three of them nice and even, um, and the studs work quite well, so let's just reassemble this. I'll set you up on the tripod and we'll buzz through it hopefully very quickly. There we go, all back together. That was a lot easier going back in. Oh, I haven't put that in. I'll do that. That's just the brake thingy. Brake hose holder, but it's all in there. That's what it's supposed to do. So, lovely jubbly. Next thing, well, I've got to torque that up, but I can't do that until the wheel's on the ground. I reckon we need to put some oil in the gearbox. So like we did previously, I've just got a hose coming from the top. I'm just going to push it in, push it in all the way and then bring it back just a little bit so we know it's got plenty of room for it to go. Let's uh, put some oil in the top. So we've got a pipe just going down there to make it easy fill in. And I can't find a funnel. I'm going to chuck the oil in um, like we did last time and basically Oh, spill it everywhere. Hopefully not. Let's just keep going like that. You don't want to see this. Bear with. There's a drain plug back in and I've used bit of uh, brake and clutch cleaner to clean up all the oil from underneath there so hopefully if we see anything well it would be more obvious if we have another problem so uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck up that side run it up and 
see uh, if we've got any leaks. So, um, that's all built up. Right mess over there. Yeah, uh, something to be said. I'm sorry if you can see me very well. I'm probably blinding myself more than you. Um, I did phone up the Vauxhall dealer to find out what capacity uh, the gearbox was. So this one is 2.6 litres, but it does vary. They gave me various um, different codes with what they um, held. And if I can work out how to, I'll put them on the screen now. But I would suggest if your code isn't on there, or if you're not sure, just give the Vauxhall dealer a ring, or if it's a traffic, you know, the Renault dealer, and uh, they should tell you how much it needs to go in. So we've been running for a good few minutes and I can't see any signs of leak there. I don't want to leave it running too long because obviously the weight's off the suspension because the wheel's off. Um, so the drive shaft's probably at a, a different angle than it would be normally. And I think that's why it was sort of bobbing up and down a little bit because it is at quite an extreme angle. So uh, yeah, I'm pleased with that and we've got to go for a road test. Obviously, we can't road test it <laughs> until I've done that up, which needs the, the wheel on. So I'll get the wheel on and then we'll tighten that up and then go for a test. Right, well, we're out on a test drive. I'll boil for you by shutting the windows because we don't have air corn in this. Um, it, it seems no different and that's about right because there was no obvious reason why there was no leak before. Um, the only reason, like I said earlier, was because of the state of the outside of the of the gearbox when we done a service. So I'm glad that we checked that. And you know, in the previous uh, previous video, we found that there wasn't a lot of oil left in it. And I'm sorry if you're shaking. <laughs> uh, so. You guys, TVPs, the old traffic with our own Provostar, get that under tray off and have a look at your gearbox. If it is soaked in oil, do something about it because you know you hear of horror stories of gearboxes failing, and I mean, well, we, we don't know what's happened to this one yet, really. You know, like there was no damage as such. Well, there, ah, damage. There's no debris in the oil, so hopefully, hopefully we've caught it in time. Uh, not the easiest of jobs, I've got to admit. Bit fiddly, bit dirty, but doable. You know, by average, what do they call it, a hobby mechanic like myself. Um, you need some good axle stands, a good jack, good vice. And you don't need any specialist tools, really. I mean, I've got some of the power tools. You don't need them. There's some awkward bits, like uh, trying to get that bottom ball joint out and failing. And then probably the, the, the better way to do it is to undo the strut bolts. You know, the box, two bolts at the bottom of the strut. So, you know, if, even if you learn from that mistake that I made, that'll be good. Uh, I hope it helps you. So, anyway, that's the end of this video, as long as everything's okay. <laughs> if there's any oil around, when I get back, I'll show you. But, if there's just any use to you this video, or entertaining, please give us a thumbs up. Um, look us up on Instagram, Larks underscore Workshop. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers then! Not really. Oh. Let's start that again, that, the rubbish. That, uh... Uh, uh, oh, a thingy ring, thingy ring. There's a drain pug. Blah! We're all going on a summer holiday. Power!